Number one says if y is the product of x plus 1, x minus 1, and x plus 5, then what is dy dx? So dy dx is asking for the derivative of y with respect to x. And finding this derivative is going to be a lot easier if we take this polynomial that's in, currently in factored form and multiply out all the factors and get it into standard form. When I do that, I will be able to use the power rule on each term individually and find this derivative pretty simply. So let's start by multiplying out all three of the factors here. The order in which you do this doesn't really matter, although I think just looking at these first two factors, it's going to be a little bit easier if we multiply x plus 1 times x minus 1 first because they are conjugates, meaning anything in the form of a plus b and a minus b are conjugates, and when you multiply those together, you get a difference of two squares. So you don't really need to know that. It doesn't, doesn't make a huge difference which order you multiply these in, but I'm just going to go with those first two first. So first we'll go just out to the side here, x plus 1 times x minus 1 x times x is x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x, x times 1 is positive x, and then finally 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So combining those two middle like terms gives me x squared minus 1, and this is what I was referring to earlier when I said if you recognize you get an a plus b times a minus b, you're going to get those two middle terms to cancel out every time, and you get a difference of two squares, like x squared minus 1 here. So that's what this piece equals. So we can actually rewrite y at this point as x squared minus 1 times x plus 5. And now we can multiply those two factors together. So let's do that. So I'll just do it out to the side here. Uh, x squared minus 1 times x plus 5. Again, I'm going to use the distributive property to multiply each term in the first binomial by each term in the second binomial x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 5 is going to be 5x squared. Negative 1 times x, negative x. And negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. I don't have any like terms to combine there, so that's it. So now we can rewrite y as x cubed plus 5x squared minus x minus 5. Now, all we did was rewrite y. We haven't really gotten any closer to finding dy dx. That is the derivative of y with respect to x. It's the expression that describes the slope of y at any given point. Now, if you've got a polynomial, the easiest way to differentiate these kind of functions is with the power rule. And let me go ahead and just write that out down here, just in case you've forgotten. The power rule says that if you want to find the derivative of an expression in the form a times x to the n. You take that exponent up here and multiply it by the coefficient and then decrease that exponent by 1. So it's actually a little bit easier in practice, I think, than trying to like look at that rule and make sense of it. Let's just do, let's go through all these terms and I think you'll, you'll hopefully by the end you'll see the pattern there. So dy dx, let's start with x cubed. We're going to bring down the 3 as a coefficient and then subtract 1 from the exponent. On the next term, we've got the initially, we've got 5x squared. We're going to bring that 2, that exponent of 2, down with the coefficient and multiply it by 5. So 2 times 5 is 10, and then decrease the power by 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. On the next term, we've got minus x. Now, there is a, an implied negative 1 here, so even though there's, and there's also an implied exponent of 1 here, so if I bring down that 1, it's still negative 1 times 1, so my coefficient's still going to be negative 1, but then I've got to decrease the exponent by 1, 1 minus 1, 0, and x to the 0th power is just 1. So this term is just going to be minus 1, and then the slope of any constant is 0, if you imagine like a horizontal line, the slope is zero. Well, anytime you've got a constant here, like negative five, the derivative is just gonna be zero. So there's, there's gonna be nothing left on this derivative. That's gonna be your answer for number one. Looks like the answer choice is C.